Hey guys and welcome to Functional Print Friday and welcome back to my shop. So before we get into this week's design, I do want to take a look at some of the prints off of the Chidi Plus 4 from last week because we didn't really have an opportunity to test much other than this one print. And in fact, we actually had an issue with this print and it's right here. If you guys missed last week's video, you can see that it kind of just looks like uh, this pulls inward a little bit as it gets up to a certain height and you can see an artifact of that on the side of the print as well. And I guess that that might be because of the gyroid infill. And I think that was partially correct because I reprinted it with grid infill. And by the way, the original one uh, off my Prusa Mark III from way back was printed with uh, grid infill. And that one also has a little bit of it. You can kind of see the same thing there, but to a far less degree. So I reprinted it on the plus four with uh, grid infill and it definitely looks better you can still see some of the same artifacts on the side as well as a little bit of, of it being pulled in. I think the remainder of this is caused by just extra shrinkage from the part cooling fan. It lets this machine go a lot faster, just like any of the, uh, the modern machines. I mean, it's the same thing with the bamboo machines, but you do end up with issues like that in some parts. And this is really a, an edge case having a super thin section. So there's not a lot of material to resist that pull and then going up to a much thicker section that is just all infill. There's no infill down here at all because uh, with the number of walls this was printed with, by the time you have the wall on this side and the wall on this side, there's no infill. It's just, it's all walls. Okay, so one of these was printed on my Bamboo Lab X1C and one of these was printed on the Chidi Plus 4. And I went right to this print to test next because this is one that has been a notorious troublemaker on my Bamboo Lab X1C. Uh, this is actually the one from my Bamboo Lab X1C. And originally I couldn't even get this print to complete. This is in Sunlu PETG, by the way, and it kept failing. And I switched to gyroid infill and I also modified the cooling parameters and I did eventually get it to print. It looks okay, uh, particularly from the top, I would say it's pretty decent. It is, it's definitely presentable. Uh, but if we look at the side, you can see there's a ton of VFA artifacts on the side of this print. And you don't really see them that much here, a little bit, uh, but particularly on the sides, and it's both sides, uh, there is a ton of VFA artifacts on there. Now, presumably these are caused by the belts on that machine. It's a Core XY machine, and Quark, this is one thing that Core XY machines often suffer from, is VFAs on the sides of prints. And it's, it's pretty bad. I mean, PETG does show it more than other filaments, but you can't miss it. Now, Fortunately with this print, this sinks down into like a metal holder and you don't really see that. So it hasn't been a huge issue, but I thought, you know what, I'm gonna start there. I remembered how painful this was. I had probably four or five failed prints before I got a successful one. So here's that same print on the Chidi Plus 4 and I printed, I just selected generic PETG. And I didn't change anything else. It's the 0.2 millimeter layer height profile, same as my X1C. This is also printed at a 0.2 millimeter layer height. Take a look at the side of this one. I can maybe, if I get the light just right, I don't know if the video is picking it up, I can maybe just barely make out some VFAs there that are a wider width, uh, presumably because the belts on this machine um, have a different pitch, as well as being a much thicker belt. But uh, yeah, I think Chidi did actually succeed in mostly eliminating uh, VFAs on that Core XY design, which is impressive because this is a larger build volume as well. So there's longer sections of belts to potentially have issues with as they work their way up and down the rollers when things aren't perfectly aligned. The surface finish on this one actually looks better too. It's hard to see. It's one of those things that it changes a lot in the light, but here I'll try and just kind of move it around so you guys can see it from all different angles. I mean, they both look good, but if I had to pick one, I would say that this one does look better. I also printed one of these torture toasters, and um, this is, again, just the default profile. This is Bamboo Lab PLA Basic Black. I just set it to generic PLA, and I used the default 0.2 millimeter profile, and everything succeeded on this. Well, one minor thing uh, didn't, and I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But if we look at this, our overhangs are pretty darn good. You can see bottom looks good. This is where we have a failure, one of the lifters for the toast. Looks like it came off the bed. They only stick on these two little small sections. And I had that same problem on my Bamboo Lab X1C. I actually could not get this to successfully complete until I lowered the print speed down. Um, on this machine, it, it did successfully complete, but it did have a similar failure. So I'll call that a tie. 
Um, but I think the, the quality of the detail on the side here is a bit better than what I recall the X1C being. And if we turn our gears here to open the side, um, our inside pieces, everything is free except the point one. Uh, this one I can't get to move. I even did try and knock it loose from the bottom. And yeah, I think it's fused down here um, in the first couple layers. But the other ones all move all the way down to the point two. And that looks nice and clean. And if we flip it around, check the other side, uh, we can see our overhangs look pretty darn good too. And this is where I think this machine did outperform the X1C a bit. All the overhangs did complete on the X1C as well. This didn't look quite as clean as that. Unfortunately, I don't still have that one. I don't usually save stuff like this. I pitched it out, but um, you guys have probably seen plenty of these. And honestly, for no tuning at all, just you know, selecting a profile and hitting go, that is a pretty darn good result. And the Toast does even still lift with that, uh, with that failed piece inside. It doesn't stop it from working, but you know, it did lose um, bed adhesion in that one spot on the side. All right, so I do actually want to solve something this week. I just wanted to give you guys an update on how things are going with that machine. I've been printing with it all week. Some of the stuff I can't show you yet because it is for future videos. But one thing we need to solve on that machine is the purge bin because I am tired of picking pieces up off the floor. Let's go look at it. I'll show you what I mean. All right, we're down here in my basement shop. This is where the GD Plus 4 lives now. And... You know what, I just realized I'm doing a test down here on these filament drives. They're actually all hooked up to this uh, temperature data logger. Um, I was going to do this in a separate video, but you guys are seeing it now. So I guess I'll put that, that data and information at the end of this video so you guys don't have to wait. This all started because in the past, these two companies, uh, this is the Airy One Snail and this is the Fix Dry. Uh, both these companies had sent me these filament dryers uh, just to test. They didn't really ask for anything. Well, that's not true. Uh, Fix Dry did ask me to do a video on it, and I said, well, I'll show it in a video if I like it and I use it. Um, the Airy One is, it's okay. I did actually uh, put a thermal probe in this when I got it and just check it after running for a few hours, and it got kind of close to the set point. It was close enough that I do at least use it to keep my filament dry when I'm printing, particularly on the X1C. Uh, this one from Fix Dry, I refuse to even show on the channel because it's an absolute joke. I don't remember exactly how hot it ever got to, but I'll say right now it is claiming to be 63, and it is T3. Yeah, it's actually 44.3 in there. Now, to be fair, that probe is in the filament. Uh, all these I'm actually probing in the filament to see what temperature the filament actually reaches. Same thing for this one. I don't want to open it up, but the probe is stuck in the filament. And same thing for this one. This is kind of what the genesis of doing this test was. Uh, Sunlu reached out and said the same thing. Hey, we'd like to send you one of these filament dryers. You know, would you be interested in checking it out? And I said, well, I'm not going to do a review on it because I've, I've, I've learned my lesson from, from those two. But I told them, I said, if I like it, I will say that I use it. I'll show it in a video and say, hey, you know, I, I use this or I use this for this print. Full well expecting it to be just the same as these two guys, not really work. And I figured I'll make a video out of it and how these things are all junk and none of them work. So I invested in a uh, this temperature uh, data logger. I think this thing pulls once a minute, if I recall. It's actually configurable. I think I have it set for once a minute. And it records for a pretty long period of time and has four probes. So T1 is the Sunlu S4. Uh, T... Two is the Airy one, and T3 is this unit. They've been running for about two hours. Now, the probes are in the filament, so I don't expect any of these to actually be at their set temp yet. You can kind of see it in this one. You can see the probes actually stuck in the filament. Um, same thing for this one. It's a little harder to see, and I don't want to open it up and let any heat out. Uh, but the probe is stuffed into the filament, and same thing for... Uh, the Sunlu S4. I also don't want to open it up, but the probe is uh, shoved deep into the filament. And I gave this guy the hardest filament. This has a roll of, well, I'll just show you quick. This has a roll of TPU with the thick cardboard sides with no vents in it. And these two both have rolls of filament that have open sides. So these two should really have the best chance of getting the filament up to set temp. But uh, the reason I'm doing this is because in my initial testing of this, it actually seems like it works as advertised and has a feature that will automatically run and maintain humidity. 
but let's wait until later and I will show you the data on this. But I have been using this with the, um, the plus four because it's super convenient just to have it sitting here at the end. I have PLA up here right now, just into the short PTFE tube. But what I do is I just pull that PTFE tube out, um, plug this guy up in here and whatever roll I'm actively using, I just put in this slot in the, uh, in the S4. So we'll come back to that later in the video. All right, let's take a look at the actual reason we're down here and that is around the back of this machine. Oh, and notice, I made up a cable for this and this is wired in to my network switch versus using it Wi-Fi. Whenever I have the option to wire something in, I always do. And I was so happy to see that this actually had that network port. But here's the problem. So this guy has a chute on the back, similar to the bamboo uh, core XY enclosed machines, uh, where the filament purge just drops out of the back. And sometimes they land on the table. They, yeah, there's actually two down here. They usually end up just down here on the floor. And I'm just, I'm tired of picking them up. I had put a cardboard box back here initially, thinking that that would solve the problem for now. But this darn thing shakes around uh, so much when it moves. They put fairly soft feet on this, which I think was a good choice. Uh, I think it's supposed to move around like that. And I think the input shaping just, you know, considers the, you know, the motion parameters of the, the printer and cancels it out. Um, again, because, you know, you saw we had very few VFAs on this machine and the print quality is really clean. Problem is, you can't really put something just behind it to catch it. Like this is on a really heavy base and it still shakes it around enough that the cardboard box worked itself to the edge and fell off the table. And I'm sure I'm not the only one having that problem. So I want to design a purge bin for this that actually attaches to the back of the printer. Um, and I say attaches, it's going to be removable. Obviously we need to take it off. And even though I have very clear access to the back of mine, uh, I want to try and design this in a way that considers most people having to reach around the back of the machine. So maybe you, you can't walk up to the back of it. You can only reach around and access whatever we do for the purge bin. So there's a couple different ways we could do this. On the P1S and the X1C, I actually made the bin magnetic. But those machines don't shake around as much. They have stiffer feet on them. So... I don't think that's going to work, even though this is metal. This panel here is metal. The rest is plastic, but this panel is metal. I don't think that's going to work. I don't even want to try that because I think that it is still just going to come loose and work its way off the, uh, the edge here. The other reason I don't want to do that is this is the intake fan for cooling the electronics in the back, and then these slots are presumably the outlet for that air. I, at least I'm not... It does, I can feel air coming out of these when this fan turns on. This is, again, this is the intake. It's not blowing air out of here. It's drawing air in, and then it blows out of these slots. So if we do something magnetic, it's going to be right up against this, particularly if we do a couple magnets. Um, and I just don't think it's going to hold up. I think we could design around it. I just don't think it's the way to go. I think we take advantage of these slots here on the back. I think we can design something that will actually just... Uh, go into the slot and then drop down and sort of hook in place. And then we don't actually touch the table. It'll essentially hang from the back of the machine. Cause this, this is plenty beefy. I mean, this is, well, it's probably only a millimeter thick, but in steel, that's plenty. And attaches very firmly to the back of the printer. So I'm confident we can hang quite a bit of weight off the back of this with no issue. So I'm gonna take some measurements and see if I can come up with a rough design that attaches using this slot and we'll have to have it spaced away from the printer a bit because I don't want to block air coming out of these and I also don't want to block air getting sucked into this guy either so all right I'm gonna I'm gonna go do some drawing well, I'm gonna take some measurements I'm gonna go do some drawing and I'll bring you guys back all right guys and here's the initial design that I came up with for this I really spent some time trying to think about how we could space this guy away from the printer but still lock into those slots. So you can see I've sort of spaced this away and I've slotted those as well so air can flow through there. And then I've got these round nubs sticking out um, that have part of them cut out so that it can drop into that slot and hang on to the back. And then this face here should sit flush against the back of the machine. I measure to make sure that where the position of these doesn't block those slots. Uh, the slots are gonna be blocked just in this section here where the nubs drop in. Uh, but the rest of those slots should be fully exposed. Um, I'm probably taller with this than I need to be, but uh, I didn't really do any recording of how the filament drops out of the back. So I am figured better safe than sorry. I'm thinking we'll print this one out and then we'll record some video and just see 
how the, the filament responds to this, whether it bounces off and goes higher than I thought or, or what. So, all right, let me get this printed out and uh, see how we did. All right, our first test piece is done and it printed successfully. This is done here on the Chidi Plus 4 and uh, looks pretty good. Well, I mean, the print quality looks pretty good. The design looks, well, it leaves a bit to be desired, but that's okay. Again, we're just trying to see if mechanically this is going to work. And I'm trying to just use up old filament for prototypes like this. Uh, the, the roll of green I was using ran out and then I finished it off with a little bit left on a roll of uh, silk shiny copper. Kind of an interesting combo, but yeah, it doesn't really look great for this part, but let's see if it works. Huh. I mean, it does hang on there, but it's, it doesn't, yeah, the moment I touch it, I thought I left plenty there for those to hook onto. What's going on? Put it in that direction, it locks. Okay, I'm embarrassed to say I had to fiddle with this for a few minutes to understand what was going on, and I made a stupid mistake. So, uh, can you see it yet? Yeah, so these are curved. These slots are curved at the bottom. And the way that I have these hooks designed, they're just barely grabbing on the edges because the hook itself, while the hook is curved, it's a flat surface. Uh, that it hangs on. So if you think about that flat surface there, it's only grabbing at the very edge of this side, this side, and here and here. That's why when I turn it around the other way, it grabs on just fine, but hooking into here, it's just barely grabbing. So we're gonna have to revise that, but I do want to actually do a filament purge and test this and see if it goes in. We are, even though we're offset here, you can see I made it wide enough that we should still catch the filament, and I'm kind of ridiculously high there. We could probably cut that down. A bit. I'm also a little worried about the fan, so I've got reasonably big fingers and I can kind of just start to fit my index finger between the two. And again, this is, this is an intake, so it's sucking air in. It's probably okay, but I am a little worried that by blocking that, it's going to be more likely to suck air from this slot that's exhaust. So it's going to suck hot air coming back out. Uh, because it doesn't really have a clear path into that fan. So we might need to tweak that as well. But assuming this guy's going to hang on here well enough, it's actually, I'll do a filament load just so we see some ejections. All right, that's only a sample size of three, but I think it gives us enough data to know that our design is reasonably sound. And if this one didn't come off, and it, again, this one, yeah, just I'm barely touching that, and it's coming off. So if that stayed on, um, that's a good sign. I mean, this thing's not actually shaking around printing, but I think if we fix that issue, um, I think this is gonna be good. So yeah, this is clearly pretty ugly. So I think I'm gonna work on a V2. And we'll see if we can get a better path to the air on that fan as well. All right, and here's the revised design that I came up with for this. And I definitely spent some more time trying to actually make this look like, you know, some attractive object that I would want to have on the back of the machine. I mean, you know, the function is the most important thing, but since this is so visible on the back, I figured, you know, it made sense to take a little time and just make it something that, uh, you know, doesn't look bad on the back of the machine. So I put a nice handle on it. That's more of a usability feature, especially for folks that are gonna to need to reach around the back of their machine. Um, but most importantly, I elongated these in the vertical direction so that I still had a fair amount of meat, just that they were, you know, plenty strong. And then I curved the section that actually goes up and goes into that slot. So it now should drop into that slot all the way and bite on there the way I originally intended. Uh, the other thing I did was I modified the side here so that there's a clear airway path into the fan. And I sloped the sides that that shouldn't require any supports. And even if a piece of filament does bounce uh, over onto this side, it's sloped enough that it should drop off down into the bottom of the bin. And yeah, I mean, if we try and dump 
the, the contents of this out on this side. It's gonna have to jump over that, uh, that little rise, which it would probably do, but if we hold it so that they all fall uh, down to this side, uh, they'll cleanly dump out of uh, this, uh, this corner here. So, all right, let's get this printed out and see how we did. All right, our print is done, and uh, I gotta say, I think that looks a lot better. I'm really pleased with how that came out. I was worried the overhang on the handle wouldn't print very well, and there's some spots there where you can see I probably pushed it a bit much. It actually looks really good on this side, but yeah, it came out nice. So you can see our extended hooks there now that are curved, so this guy should hook on here pretty well. Yeah, if I line them up, it will. Oh yeah, that is that is much better. Okay, so that hooks in nicely. Let's see, we should have clearance on the fan now too. Um, or not. Did you measure this? Measure what? This right here, you know, on the side where the fan's supposed to draw fresh air in so it's not blocked. Did you measure it? Of course I measured it. What are you talking about? I don't believe you. I don't think you measured it. Tell me the truth. All right, I'm a level with you. I took a picture of it and I eyeballed it from the picture. It should have been really close, right? What are you working on anyway? Don't worry about it. For future video, spoilers, don't look. All right, and here's what is hopefully the final design of this. Uh, I took actual measurements and made sure that the position of the cutout for our fan is in the right spot. I also brought down the geometry for uh, this part here all the way down to the bottom. I previously stopped here. I'm not even sure why I did that. Uh, it makes sense to just drop this all the way down to the bottom. We probably don't need that much of a contact surface on this face, but it's certainly not gonna hurt. The other thing I did was I actually increased the overall height at the top by 20 millimeters. I didn't get it on camera, but in testing this, there was one uh, filament ball that actually it kind of bounced at like the perfect angle, hit here. I thought it was going to drop in, but it was a little heavier on the other side, and it sort of just very slowly rolled off the edge and dropped onto the floor. So, yeah, I mean, that could have been a one in a million, but I don't want that to happen. And it has to come out at it uh, traveling in that direction to even make it over there. So I think just by increasing the height, uh, we're going to make it that instead that's going to hit this side and, and drop in. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's print this out and, uh, yeah, hope that, hope that this is the final one. I'm tired of messing with this. I just want this to work. All right, third time's a charm, right? So I raised this up 20 millimeters to hopefully catch those sort of off bounces. And um, I adjusted our fan position with measurements. Let's see how this goes. Okay, yep, we're hanging on there real good. And yeah, that is that is dead on now. So we have a nice, hopefully you can see there, uh, airflow path into that intake fan. And the way we designed how this goes up against the printer itself, we should have plenty of airflow uh, through everything over here. We're not blocking that slot where the hot air comes out. And I gotta say, I like the look of it too. It looks uh, It looks like it belongs on the back of this machine. So let's try the, uh, let's pretend that we can't get to the back. Yeah, so getting it off is real easy. I think getting it on, if I'm at roughly the right height, if I slide it across at like a bit of an angle, see if I can find where it goes. Almost. Yeah. So you can actually get it on blind as well. When I was holding it so just this nub here uh, is against the back of the machine and then sliding it across. And when I feel it drop in, it's gonna rotate it a little bit and then drop it down. So you can reach around the back of the machine blind and still use it. This, by the way, is, uh, is the Sunlu um, High Speed PLA in orange. And I really like that color. I think it looks really good on the back of this. There's probably a number of other colors that would work well too. Oh, you know what? Speaking of orange, I got something else I want to show you guys quick. Okay, remember how I was complaining about how they did a nice job here having this transparent section in the glass where it says GD plus four 
uh, but then you close it and you can't see it because the gasket blocks it off. I got an idea. So take a look at that. Plain old orange electrical tape and I could probably do a better job actually uh, trimming that so it doesn't look uh, terrible inside although I guess we don't really ever see that but from the outside now we have a nice accent color and you can do whatever color you want. Um, white electrical tape would probably show the best but I kind of think the orange looks neat. Alright so all of these have been running for three to four hours now. Let's actually go take a look at the test results. All right and here are the results after letting this run for almost five hours. So if we take a look here, the Sunlu S4 is in dark blue, the Everyone Snail is in the light blue, the Fix Dry is in green, and as a control, the Room Temp is in, I guess that's magenta. So keep in mind, this is, the probes were all stuffed into the filament, so the rise time is pretty slow because I shoved the probe in there as deep as I could get it. I got it under, I think, two wraps of filament on each one of these. So the Sunlu S4 was set at 63 degrees Celsius, the fix dry was set at 63 degrees Celsius as well. Both the Sun Lewis 4 and the fix dry were indicating that they had reached 63 degrees. Uh, the fix dry was actually still kind of rising there very slowly. I don't think it was ever going to make it, but it reached its max cycle time and turned off anyway. Uh, the Everyone Snail, this actually did better than I expected it to. The last time I checked this one, I guess it was with a different probe. So, you know, this is probably more accurate than that. This actually got reasonably close. Um, let's see, I think I can't really see the... Oh, um, if we look down here, let's see, that is T2 max. It got to 54.1. The Sunlow S4 got to 58.1. The fixed dry, yeah, got to 44.8, which really isn't drying anything. Uh, the Everyone Snail, I don't generally dry filament in there, but what I do is I will put filament in there after I've dried it in a quote-unquote real filament dryer just to keep it dry while I'm printing, and it has worked well for that. The Sunlu S4, though, I mean, look at how fast the rise time is there versus either one of the other two of these. I mean, it hit within less than an hour. It was up to 50 degrees C already, and it's a shame I didn't have enough probes um, or channels to data log that I could log the air temp in each one as well. But if we, if I flip over to, let's see, 10, this, this is actually, this is the first time I tested the S4. Now the units just flipped over to Fahrenheit. I, I did record this in Fahrenheit, but the, the light blue here is the air temp inside of the Sunlu S4 and the dark blue is Again, I had the probe stuffed into the filaments. You can see it gets up to the internal temperature, the internal air temp very quickly. And what you see over here is actually my favorite feature of this machine because I had stuffed this full of a whole bunch of, not wet filament, but filament that was fairly um, humid, we'll call it. I wouldn't, it's not, it's, it's, it's filament that I would not print with without drying. And what it's doing here is it's cycling. It has a humidistat inside as well. And I set it to, uh, when it gets up to 30% humidity, to run down to, I think I had it set at 20 or 25%. So it cycles on until it comes down to the, the, uh, the humidity set point and then idles and waits until the humidity goes back up to greater than 30% uh, humidity. And that's what you see here is that's why you see the air temperature cycling inside and you can see the temperature of the filament slowly rising over time. So what's not logged here is I had run a full cycle like this and then I let it drop back down. It was cycling. I put the probes in while, the, while it was cycling and then I ran another actual drying cycle. And it's important to note, you don't have to uh, stop the drying cycle or, or start another cycle for it to maintain. You can, if you set it in the mode where you want it to maintain, it, the settings allow you to set the initial temperature and runtime and then when it completes that, and it unfortunately didn't happen here, there wasn't like another run in this, but once it senses the humidity that com coming back up to that 30%, it goes back into cycling just to maintain uh, the low humidity level in the actual box, which is what I really like about this because instead of just printing from it, I've just loaded it full of the most common filaments that I use that need to be dry before I print. There's a lot of things that I'd like to print out of PETG or TPU, or nylon, and I don't because 
I draw it, and then I don't want to wait five hours, eight hours for the filament to dry, I, and I end up just printing it out of PLA. Having rolls of TPU, PETG, and I don't have any nylon in there yet, but I'm going to put some in, always ready to go, and right next to the, the plus four, I can just you know, switch that PTFE tube into whatever film I want to, I want to run, and it's just, it's always ready to go. So, yeah, in summary, the, the, the Sunlu S4, uh, you can see here that the set point, I believe I set it at 145, and the tops of these peaks are a little higher than 145. It looks like it was reaching maybe 146, 147, and it would cycle back on when it got down to 136, 137. So again, the air temp reached the set point, maintained it, and it got there pretty quick. The filament never quite reached it, but it was another one of those rolls of filament with the, 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 the thick cardboard sides. So you can see it was still slowly rising. I think it eventually would have gotten there, but keep in mind, this is a much longer runtime. So look at this, 9 p.m. And it essentially cycles off at, yeah, I don't know, what would that be? Um, maybe 1 a.m., something like that. Actually, it probably shows the time. Yeah, 1.54 a.m., so about 2 a.m. it cycled off. So that's a long run time, and it never quite got there. I think it eventually would have, but it still got quite close. So let's see, our max on T1 is 137.4 with a set point of 145. So not, you know, not perfect, and I think I do still see better results in the food dehydrator that I typically use, but that is more than usable, and I love that you can actually store the filament in it. So the Sunlow S4, I, yeah, I would, I would recommend it. The Airy one, if you just want a single filament holder to, uh, to maintain the low humidity of your filament while you're printing, yeah, it'll, it'll get that job done. I don't know that it's going to get hot enough and stay hot enough for like the new nylon combination filaments out there, it might actually start to pick up humidity before you finish the print cycle. The fixed dry, I would just plain not recommend. That thing is, I don't think it even has a real humidistat or thermometer. I think it's just running a like a little program off uh, off the chip in it. All right, well, it took a couple tries as usual, but I'm really happy with the end result that we got on this. And um, yeah, I think this is gonna work out really well. So the STL for this, like everything that we do here on this channel, will be available completely for free on my site, fpfdesigns.com. And I will put that link down in the description. You don't have to worry about trying to type that in. And if this is by chance your first time here on the channel, this is all I do on this channel. It's all functional prints, new video every single Friday. And uh, a lot of stuff out here in my shop but I do stuff to modify my 3D printers and do stuff out in the yard and around the house as well. So if you're into that sort of thing, check out some of my other videos. And if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. And guys, if you do, I'll see you next Friday.